Welcome to Football Miami TV. My name is Uncle Ed, and this is... Peter Brown. And we're here to bring you the latest Football Miami TV uh, information. What, what, what do we have up for today, Peter? Well, first off, before we, we get too far into it, we just want to remind everybody to please like and subscribe to this video. It really helps. We've had quite a few uh, new subscribers, and so this is just the very beginning of this page, of this group, uh, show. And so just please help us along and like and subscribe if you like the content. And leave comments and tell us if we're yeah. doing good or bad and how you don't like Peter or you don't like me. <laughs> Let's, let's go with the latter. Mm -hmm. uh, but this week, I, want, I thought it'd be fun to talk about uh, the Inter-Miami Temporary Stadium locations. Just a little background in that the 378 vote that went uh, a couple weeks ago, it was approved by the city of, of uh, residents of Miami. So now Inter-Miami can go into negotiations with the city to go for a 99-year lease for the land that will become Freedom Park. But we all know that that Freedom Park is not going to be open in time for the 2020 season. Just like most MLS teams, they have to play at a, a, a temporary, temporary. temporary location for a period of time. And there are four temporary locations here in South Florida that have been mentioned. So I figured it'd be fun for us to talk about the pros and the cons of each of these potential uh, locations. So it started off. I mean, let's start with the biggest or this. Let's start with the smaller ones, I think. I think we should start with the smallest ones first because the, the top two really are, are the ones that are going to duke it out probably, yeah, right? I think, I think it's going to be like that. But Okay, we've got FIU Stadium. FIU. Um, it's, uh, if you guys haven't been there, it uh, kind of has like a, I don't know, like a high school feel to it. Really? I, I think it's a great football stadium. Yeah. It's I, uh, Miami FC has played there. I like it. Um, Fort Lauderdale Strikers played there for a little while. A uh, glorified high school it's it mm. it looks like a lot of MLS stadiums. Don't don't mm. don't uh, criticize it too too bad. I, well, I don't want them to play there. That's just you know. Me. It's, but it's, and it's closer to me. The, the, it's closer to me. The, the the build of the stadium is very mm. similar to other MLS stadiums. It, it you know it's a lot of metal and all that stuff. It's That's got way twenty three thousand five hundred spectators could be in there. It's a perfect number. Yeah, it's a perfect number. I think it's a good location. Biggest issue. It's still not in the heart of, of of downtown Miami, and that's really where Don Garber. David Beckham, Jorge Mas, that's where everybody really wants this team to be, is in the, the, the core, the core yeah. uh, of it's, the city. If, it, if we were to rank it amongst the larger stadiums, it would be 11th. There's a lot of stadiums that are, that are just about the same capacity. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's about 11th, 11th in, the, in, the, uh, in the, um, the group of stadiums and stuff. So the biggest issue, though, is it currently has a tenant, Miami FC, and... They've made such a big commitment to that stadium and that, that Ricardo Silva, the owner of Miami FC, has got his name on the stadium. Yeah. That's a little, that's that a little hard to an, fight. So I think that's your biggest issue is that Miami FC currently, a lower division team, is calling that place home. And so I think that's your biggest issue uh, with that stadium. It's not, I think it's perfect size. It feels like an MLS stadium. I've seen Gold Cup games there with a full house. Awesome, uh, great atmosphere. So I think it's a really good option. Your biggest issue is it's on turf. They could fix that, and it's it's got a, a currently has a tenant that is not thrilled with that uh, with uh, MLS. You know, he tried well, to buy his way into MLS, and yeah. they said thanks but no thanks. Right, right. So he is not. If he has any uh, say in the matter, he's not going to make it easy. Yeah, even though they have come out and said, you know, they'd be okay with it, but I think that's mm. just, you know, they just want to look good in it. But, the, like, the, the season starts in March and ends in August, uh, while the FIU football team uh, plays from August to, uh, what, I think, December 1st. And, and you know, that stadium has a, holds a, a little bit of a, a place in my heart because that's where, uh, you know, in the beginning days of, of bringing MLS to Miami, that's where uh, you know some of us supporters went and passed out flyers for day, uh, when Marcelo Clore was trying to partner with um, Barcelona, and so we went to some of those football games and were passing out flyers for for uh, that endeavor that never came to be. So there's a little uh, special place in our heart for that place. Yeah. What's that's, that's like the first part, the first place that I saw uh, David Beckham too. The first time I took a picture. Uh, that's when with you fell man. in love with Beckham. Well, I didn't fall in love with him. He's the one that wants to take pictures with me all the time. Well, that bald head of yours. Yeah. Well, I had a hat on back then. I had a little. Everybody knows you got a bald head. Okay. But but anyways, so so that's um, your case for uh, F FIU and um, 
then there's FAU. So that's the biggest thing. Yeah. They now the FAU Jorge Massa came out and said something to the effect of it'd be nice to play some games up there. Right. Um, I am not a fan of a team playing in multiple stadiums within a season. Right. So playing a few games up in in Boca Raton, uh, which is an hour away from or more from from uh, downtown Miami, um, I think is a mistake. I think uh, it's it's also a great stadium. Feel, feels similar to FIU. Really nice stadium. Great location. Great location for Broward, Palm Beach. Not so much for Miami. Here's the thing: is I do like the idea. Of playing some games there to reach out to oh, the Broward yes. Palm Beach community I was so, because say that too. and, and, Jor- and Jorge Moss said the same thing and I agree with that. Not in the season though. I think you play some some uh, preseason matches there, some mm-hmm. friendlies there. Yeah, that could work. I think that would work. Um, but yeah, the distance is a problem. I think I wouldn't want to go because of the distance. Um, but what can but, you say in, in favor of that stadium, Peter? What, what do you think? It's a nice stadium. That's the only thing. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice stadium in a good location. Boca Raton has a lot of soccer supporters, but the team is not Boca, Inter Boca. Right. The team is Inter Miami. And so the team needs to, as much as I would like for it to be there, because it's convenient for me being a Broward resident, it doesn't make any sense. Right. I think it only makes sense for marketing purposes of reaching out to the community, which is very important. And near and dear to my heart is reaching out to the Broward and the Palm Beach people um, because all of South Florida should love this team. But I I still I'm I'm a firm believer it should be uh, for international friendlies, uh, preseason matches or something like that. I saw a USA game a while back up there and, you know, it's it's larger than uh, FIU, um, Mm -hmm. FAU stadiums that holds about 30,000 people. Uh, It's a nice size, I Mm -hmm. think it would be. You know, uh, of the two stadiums, I would probably say this one's a little bit better, um, just from my perspective, and it's it's a little larger. But I agree with you. I think the best thing for them to do is if they want to reach out to the community up there, because a lot of those people are going to come down. They're going to start using the train. They're going to, yeah. you know, they're going to come down in buses. Um, that's also their market. So um, I agree. They they should do uh, some friendlies and uh, play them there. All right, so let's let's battle it out here between <clears throat> what I think are the two biggest contenders for a temporary stadium for uh, Inter Miami, and that and we we can mention both of them and just kind of talk the pros and cons of, of each is the Hard Rock Hard Rock Stadium, mm-hmm. which is in more of a North Miami. It's right right near Broward County Dade County line. I, that's actually my uh, where I grew up, so near and dear to my heart. Uh, and and Marlins Park, it's Marlins Park uh, being, I mean from from Marlins Park. You can see the uh, downtown, you know, the yeah. downtown, but also yeah. where Freedom Park area pretty much. I mean, yeah. you could, it's right you there. Could, you could see it. Yeah, you could see it from. I think uh, Jorge Mas said in an interview recently that he could see uh, his uh, from his office. He could see Marlins Park. Right. So it's pretty close, and it's it's close to Mill Reeves, and it's in the actual city. So I think that's important. Uh, while at the same time, Hard Rock Stadium, it's a larger stadium. It's more. Uh, it's more, of course, centered as a, for for a football team, American football team, but it, it's of the two stadiums. I tend to go with Hard Rock just because it's it just seems more professional. I've seen I've seen um, a lot of games there, Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, all those teams that come and go, and and those stadiums are perfect for it. And especially now that they've got that roof going. Yeah, well, now that they put those canopies over it, it mm. really does look like a true soccer stadium or a, a football stadium. It really mm. does. But it's still too far from Miami. Right. It, technically, it's in Miami. Miami Dolphins play there, so I guess you could say it's okay. But my point is, if you are building a team and you're trying to you know, create a fan base... And you don't want to create that fan base that it gets used to going to the stadium uh, that's in north of uh, the northern part of Miami, and and you know and then say we're gonna now we're gonna move it to downtown Miami the very next year. And a lot of those people may not be happy with having to go to downtown. Yeah. So I think you you keep the stadium somewhere in the downtown area the entire time. Get people used to going to downtown. Get people get used to uh, people used to taking the mass transit or whatever. Whatever way they're going to get there. So I think the only option, in my opinion, the only option is Marlins Park. 
Well, the only problem with Marlins Park that I have is you can't tailgate. No. And a lot of people here, they love to tailgate. And, you know, uh, Dolphin Stadium, I still call it Dolphin Stadium. But Hard Rock Stadium has plenty of space for that. I still call it Joe gonna, Robbie. Well, well, Joe Robbie, because yeah. you're old school. I'm old. Uh, but, you know, he's pretty old. But, uh, but yeah, that's the people here in Miami, they like the tailgate. That's true. You know? So that's that's one one issue that I that I have with Marlins Park. But is Freedom Park going to have a tailgate area? Ah, uh-huh, good question. I don't know. We don't know that. Good question. They, they do have uh, the outside screen. I think yeah. what they're looking for more in that stadium, and we're kind of going a little bit off, but that stadium is they want people to be around the stadium. Sure. Uh, that's why they're going to have that big screen there. Right. So And plus there's going to be all sorts of other activities to do there. So, um, it could work because you know, they'll get used to uh, people get used to Marlins Park, and they're gonna maybe have that same ambience. You know, maybe get people from doing the tailgating. I don't know. I don't. Know. I think the biggest problem with Marlins Park is it's a baseball stadium. However, I, I did read that. something recently, and I did not know this that Marlins Park they did consider soccer when building it. That's the first I've heard of that. Now, I know that's the case with Hard Rock Stadium. Because Hard Rock Stadium was built by Joe Robbie. At the time that he built it, his wife uh, owned the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Well, he had CD dreams. Technically, well, yeah. But at that time, <laughs> mm-hmm. owner, uh, NFL owners weren't allowed to own two sports. So okay. his wife owned the, uh, the, the Strikers. And so he dreamed someday of the Strikers being big enough that they could play at the, at the stadium. The and they were getting stadium. there. They were. They getting were. Uh, but that never happened. But this is the first time I've heard that Marlins Park was actually built with that in mind as well. Now, so they're saying it's a little bit wider. And my point is, in New York, they're making it work. While it may not be perfect, they're making it work. So why can't we make it work for one, one and a half years at the most? Mm-hmm. And it's a great location. It's, it's right where you want to be, the downtown area. You can't beat it. Can you? Well, also, I mean, if you've, sit, if you've been there... If you're watching I've been there to watch baseball. Team, I've never well, gone there to watch soccer. I've gone to watch soccer. And you're kind of, depends on where you're sitting, but where I was sitting, I was kind of like leaning in, you know, watching the game like this. So I was mm-hmm. kind of like uncomfortable. So I had to like lean forward mm-hmm. to see. So that's something, you know, people could deal with that for one year, but I don't know if they can deal for it, with it more more time. Right, than right. That. But let's talk about, you know, Hard Rock Stadium holds 65,326 people. It's a lot. That's a lot of people. And I see, like, the first game, they could fill it up. Sure. Maybe the second. Third. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Atlanta's doing it. Why Atlanta's can't, doing why it. Why can't we be the next Atlanta? It could happen. It could be that Marlins Park is just too small. Because <laughs> Marlins Park is just too small now? Yeah. Because now we've decided we're going to be the next Atlanta, so Marlins well, Park is too small. Well, of course. That's just like that. to be like that. But Marlins Park, I mean, okay, it's 36,742 people fit in yeah. Marlins Park. It's just with a, a six thousand more than FAU Stadium. Um, it's more intimate. Uh, it's going to be louder because it's closed yeah. up. If it rains, it, you know, no problem. But same problem, same issue uh, with Hard Rock. Now they've got, you know, at least people won't get won't get wet. They have great food at Marlins Park. Well, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. I've, 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 I've oh. sampled their Cuban sandwich. Wow. Oh, that's that's going to be a good one. And it, well, there's another point you've got. It's in Little Havana. Right. I mean, it's it, Marlins Park is is right in the middle of everything. Yeah. that's Miami. Yeah, while Hard Rock is on the on the edge of, you know, of the county lines. So, yeah, I I, I, I think for me, just for for uh, if we're just talking about me, I think Hard Rock is great because it's convenient for me being a Broward resident to hop off the turnpike. I mean, I drove past it today. Uh, I think it's I think it's a great it's convenient. But if I'm just thinking about building a team. Building a new fan base, I I think I like the idea of the fan base uh, starting off their first season in the same general area where they're gonna call their permanent home. Right. So Ed, what we got to talk about when we were thinking of Hard Rock is we got to talk about the schedule because it's a busy schedule. Hard, Tell me about it. Well, Hard Rock has the Miami Open now. Yeah, tennis, there. and uh, that's from February to to the beginning of May. Um, they've got they've got a little window between May to August for something, right? But uh, then they got the Finns and the Canes, right? So that's going to be impossible. Imagine the, how torn up the field will be when you've got the Finns, the Canes, and the 
um, herons. Uh, and the herons, yeah. They're going to be playing hard. <laughs> Tearing up that field. They're, yeah. I, I, that's going to be nuts to All try right. to... Uh, two, two football American football teams playing in that same stadium with a soccer team. It's not going to... All right. You got to make a decision now. You are now making the decision for Inter-Miami. Uh-huh. Have I swayed you? Have I convinced you that Marlins Park is the only option? Peter, unfortunately, I think you're right. I think so because yes, I mean they're gonna they're gonna be playing at the same time as the Marlins, right? Mostly, but I think it's gonna be a lot easier than you know competing with the Finns and, well, and the Canes. It's not convenient playing on a baseball field, but like I keep thinking, uh, NYCFC is doing it. They're figuring it out. Why can't we figure it out for a year? And they figured it out. For, they're they're having to figure it out for a much longer period of time because they're having a bigger, uh, more struggles getting a stadium built. So, you know. So, uh, you guys can tell us what you think. Uh, go ahead and leave us comments and say, hey, we're going for Hard Rock. We're going to FAU Stadium. Going to FIU. Whatever you guys think is, is better. Or, or right now that we thought about Marlins Park being the solution for all this, uh, let us know. And news could be coming out really soon, too, because we do know that uh, Jorge Moss was touring the facility with Don Garber. Uh, there was a recent um, soccer expo at their soccer x i'm mm-hmm. sure it stands for soccer expo yeah. uh at the at the stadium so they were touring it uh so we could hear something soon yeah i think uh we you're you know something that i don't well so um thanks to everybody you know ed mentioned to uh put some comments in there and we'll uh, we'll go through them and we've gotten quite a few comments uh in our uh, recent videos and we really appreciate all the comments even if it's uh criticism or what have you some people have commented that we've had some audio issues we're working on it so thanks for bearing with us as this is a new project for us and we're working and working out some technical details but now it's time for the news okay peter so let's talk about uh some of the stuff that's come up recently um there's the last week we talked about the uh, inter miami logo and now there's mm-hmm. another team that just came out with a new logo and it's fc cincinnati um, we're going to put some of the images up so you guys can check them out. They're, they've got their old logo and their new logo. Um, I think Inter Miami is a lot better, guys. Well, does, you know, well I mean, bias or it's, whatever. It's, it's a lot better, but, you know, they're catching a little fire on this, on this logo. It's, it's just, it's not bad, but it's not good. Yeah. It's just kind of, eh. It's something I think I could have done. <laughs> You know, here's you know what, it looks and I like? don't even you know do you know designs or anything, right. but I think I could have drawn something. A little bit. So I'm curious, did you Ed ever play Pro Evolution Soccer? I did, but you know, a couple, a few years. back. Of course, yeah. I don't even know if it's out anymore. Yeah, but uh, everybody plays FIFA, right? Right. Uh, but Pro Evolution Soccer, when you played that that video game, you could create your own team, and in creating your own team, you could pick one of the generic logos. And I think if I remember correctly, you might be able to modify it a little bit by changing the name. Mm-hmm. So these are logos that were to, trying to make themselves look a little European or whatever. But but they're just very, very generic kind of bland looking logos that you would make for your generic bland looking team. That's what this is. Mm-hmm. This is exactly a, a um, Pro Evolution Soccer logo. Mm-hmm. This is not a... If, if they came out with this logo here in Miami, we would be furious. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw their USO logo and it looks quite primitive, quite quite you know blocky-ish, I guess you could say. And then their new one, that, if you guys check out the uh, the uh, MLS website, I'm looking at right now, it's kind of simple. And we've got the line. How many lines do we have already? That uh, just that team. Well, Orlando. Yeah, the team that you like. What? Um, I like Orlando. I don't necessarily like the team. All right, Mickey Mouse. You I, like Mickey Mouse. That's hey, what. it's uh, you know 90th birthday. <laughs> okay. Well, so, okay, they've got the, I don't know, if, did you see the breakdown of the name by any chance? No, I didn't really pay attention to it. I'm just looking at aesthetically. Yeah. As far as, uh, you know, what it looks, I'm not sure what it means, yeah. but why don't you, why don't you kind of tell me some of what it means? What, what it means to me really, to be, to be honest, is boring. It, I don't mind the colors. They're okay. Yeah. But overall, it's just kind of boring. Well, you know, they said that what, you know, they put the crest, it says West End and soccer inspired. And then the type is a modern German inspired um, logo. All right. And well, then Cincinnati, you know, city on the rise. To me, uh, is, is um, one question, is the beer Lowenbrau German? I think so. Is it? 
Because that, that, that lion kind of makes me think of Lowen oh, Brown. Yeah, Lowen Brown. Man. It makes me want is that still around? I don't know, but it makes I me want to have a beer. beer. Yeah, that reminded me. That's yeah. the only good thing this logo is doing for me. It makes me want to have a beer. And it's, it's, you know, it's so, you know, like you're talking about a primitive, you know, and I'm, and I'm looking, looking at the mm-hmm. uh, image right here. Um, you know, they got the sword ready for battle. Crown, Queen City. Uh, the main has seven, I guess, spikes on it. Yeah, right. seven hills of Cincinnati. Wing, three seasons of play, because there's three things uh, uh, before they join MLS. Uh, the, the wing line is a winning spirit, and the tail is in a form of a C for Cincinnati. Got it. And, you know, we had Inter-Miami do theirs in comparison. Looks so much better. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the quality of the Inter-Miami logo and the quality of this, there's no well, comparison. Also, the description is so much better. So much, uh, Yeah, I mean, there's you know, more to it in the description. It's like a different I mean, level. I mean, I just I think some of these descriptions that these designers these days come up with are just so bogus. It's like they just come up with a cool design now. It's like, all right, how do we tie it into something? Make some, um, you know, bogus, uh, you know, history behind it. Right. But it, um, it's just boring. It's not, a, it's not offensive. Mm-hmm. And it's not great. It's just, eh. But it's not our team, so who cares? Yeah, so let them do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> I'm glad they're in the Good league. I'm glad they're in the league. Yeah. They've been a uh, they've been a good USL club. So welcome to to MLS and uh, the you know, rivalry with Columbus is going to be. I mean, it's going right to be all, It's going to be fun. That's going to be good. It'll I'm be glad Columbus is still around because uh, otherwise people would have had just Cincinnati, and uh, that's a good rivalry that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. But there's other news. All right, what what else we have? We got in Mexico, uh, looks like uh, uh, Gerardo Martino, what's his name? Uh, I call him Martinez, but apparently <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> Tata Martinez, Mar- Martinez, there I go, Martino. Uh, he um, it looks like he's going to go uh, with Mexico for four years. Yeah, they've apparently uh, inked a deal. Um, uh, Garber even came out and, and uh, complimented him or saying that they were very shrewd or something like that in, in grabbing uh, Tata. So, you know... Atlanta, and, you know, we keep talking a lot about Atlanta because I think they've done so many things right. Mm-hmm. And as a new team... Nobody you, expected it. No. But as a new team, you want to look at what other... You know, the, the ones that came just before you did. Right. So you can see what they did right and replicate it. What they did wrong, go away from it. They did. looks like they did so many things right. And one of the things that they did right was getting Tata Martino. Yeah. And... Uh, um, and and you know he did a great job. I mean they're they're in the they're in the uh, the, the playoffs. playoffs still, mm. and you know so they're they're doing great. They're a great story. A lot of great players. Um, some of their players are are, are linked to, to clubs in Europe already. Mm. So um, it doesn't surprise me that he's going to move on. Um, wh- but I'm curious, what does that mean for us uh, being uh, United States fans? We still don't even have a coach. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, he knows MLS pretty well. A of lot course. of the players in the U.S. is gonna, you know, from the U.S. national team is gonna be from MLS. So I'm kind of worried because he's he knows our, our style of play, um, and I don't know, but uh, it's good for MLS that you know one of their coaches goes on exactly. and moves on to something you know right. bigger and better. Right. So uh, and like that, there's other uh, coaches that are also moving on, and it appears. We've got um, Oscar Pareja from right. So there's Dallas. yeah, there's a report that he might be on his way to Club Tijuana. Yeah, and there's another guy that I would have wanted for uh, the U.S. national team. Mm-hmm. He's uh, had a lot of experience. Like Peter once said, he he wasn't born here in the states, but he's basically he played here. He's coached here. Um, he's and, as American as you can get and still be a foreigner. Right. So. <laughs> Uh, so for me, it's he's it's a, I guess a step ahead, a step forward for him for in his career. He's, I mean, he's, he's moving on. A Mexican club is most Mexican clubs are would be considered a bigger mm-hmm. uh, deal than than an MLS club. It's a step right. up. So congrats to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I was kind of surprised with that one. Uh, I thought you know I know he's being talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, as as uh, the U.S. coach, although he's not the front runner, Burhalter is right. the front runner. Right. But uh, I was kind of surprised. Kind of came out of left field that that he's going to potentially be going to to Tijuana. I haven't seen him uh, comment on this yet, but I did see a report coming out from uh, Mexico that that's 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 happening. So you know, good good for for these guys and good for MLS because uh, they're getting a lot of press out in uh, in uh, in the world for all these uh, great coaches that are coming out. 
Yeah. From so Miami. let's hope uh, Miami gets a great coach of their own. But real quick, before we wrap this show up, I just did want to mention one thing since we were talking about the stadiums. There is Jorge Moss did come out and say that they hope to break ground on the stadium at the end of this year. That's important. That's big news for us down here. That's and so uh, they could move as early into the new venue as early as mid-2021. So this, mm-hmm. this, this temporary stadium could be a season, season and a half. Okay. So still- great news mm-hmm. uh, uh, all around. Um, yeah. There's, um, so guys, um, thank you for listening to us and, uh, and putting up with our ugly mugs. Um, you know, his. Uh, remember to subscribe down there. Leave us comments. And uh, don't forget to keep watching us. We've got top fives every week. We've got our weekly show and we're, uh, our new segment, Peter, that's coming out uh, this week is... FMTV Cribs. Check it out, guys. So We might have borrowed that name a little bit. Yeah, a little Whatever. bit. Whatever. But you guys will like it. All right. Thanks for watching. And remember, like and subscribe.